Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I um, uh, hope you had a good day so far. And um, all right, and uh, hope you're going to enjoy this uh, session. All right, so if you have any questions, um, you're welcome to uh, chat them into the chat box. Um, I will uh, um, keep my eye open on uh, for th for those questions, um, and then uh, we can deal with it uh, as we go along. All right. Um, Again, welcome everyone. Um, all right, so we are recording it. We're going to upload it to our uh, website so and YouTube channel. So you're welcome to go re-look at it or uh, pass it on to uh, someone else. All right, um, okay, so the session for this uh, uh, webinar is uh, using Revit for interior design. Um, now, what just a little bit of background uh, with regards to uh, us and uh, micrographics so we are resellers and we sell the software do the training um, you know plotters uh, the presentation tools like Lumion we are a distributor of and um, uh, uh, HP printers and uh, PCs and the whole work so uh, it's basically kind of a one shop uh, for your uh, needs in, in architecture interior design and mechanical design and that sort of thing all right so okay so the um, agenda for today it's just looking at um, you know, the introduction of the topic um, and then uh, what and how Revit can be used to, to create this uh, um, interior presentation and uh, um, you know, the, the, the geometry and the context and, and uh, um, linking with uh, architects, engineers and that sort of thing. And then uh, you know, the deliverables that you get uh, you know, through the workflow and the process and and uh, the importance of that uh, process and the workflow with regards to um, what you can get out of the uh, the system be it Revit or, or what, whatever. Um, we also look at a conclusion and and, uh, you know, and the value thereof. Right so just to uh, introduce Revit um, it's been around for uh, for, for years. Um, it's been improving uh, year after year and um, the the product is a, is a real fit I believe for uh, interior design um, because it's both uh, visual, uh, it gives you visual feedback as you work um, but it's also technical so uh, provides you know the, the technical side of of, uh, um, of the information that you add. Um, now Traditionally, uh, Revit has been used by architects, um, you know, to create the, the model. Um, however, in, interior designers have been using it uh, successfully for years as well. Um, there are there, there are other uh, software out there. Um, I'll name them SketchUp and, and that sort of thing. Um, these software are in the same realm. Um, they are easy to use. Um, they have visual uh, feedback. Um, you can generate your your plans, etc. But um, obviously, the topic for today is specifically Revit and how it fits in uh, uh, into the whole. All right. Um, okay. So apologies for that. Uh, um, we're back on track. Hopefully, uh, everybody can hear me. Um, perhaps just indicate in the chat box if you could. Uh, if everything is uh, just uh, say yes, we can hear you. Okay, all good. All right, great. Um, okay, so I can't remember where I was, but um, basically the, uh, the first step of creating this uh, Revit interior design project is to import as much as you can. Um, and uh, by importing these uh, AutoCAD images, etc., um, you can start creating the context uh, around which you're going to design, uh, be it walls, ceilings, floors, and that sort of thing. All right, um, and Revit caters for all of these, uh, uh, or most of these imports. All right. Okay, then once you've obviously imported the uh, the information on, uh, um, and uh, you can start creating your uh, components, be it walls, floors, ceilings, and, and that sort of thing. Now, uh, the beauty of Revit is it's designed for that. Um, it's got out-of-the-box tools to create walls, doors, windows, floors, ceilings, uh, and that sort of thing. And uh, it's very easy to to uh, model. 
Um, it's very self-explanatory. Um, yes, you, you might uh, need to do some training just to get going uh, faster, um, but to create the geometry is very quick and easy. Um, talking about uh, more complex geometry, you know, that's a different discussion, but we'll, we'll get there. All right, so okay, so once you've got the the shell in which you can work, um, if you're doing uh, planning with regards to uh, uh, furniture and and that sort of thing, um, one of the aspects again of Revit is to uh, it can link in with a lot of other systems um, for content. Uh, it's got its own content. Um, it can link through uh, BIM objects. Uh, the little image there in the middle allows you to uh, link and import real life uh, ge uh, geometry and uh, um, objects that's been created by suppliers. Uh, those suppliers um, obviously post their uh, geometry and models on a system called BIM object. Uh, they pay a small fee and you basically allowed to download it for free um, and obviously specking those uh, components be it light fittings furniture um, uh, you know boss tools fridges uh, that sort of thing right obviously you also have this uh, the sketchup 3d warehouse where uh, again it's free con content uh, there's a range of uh, 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 a complex uh, or simple content that you can download depending on um, you know the the, the topic and uh, I just search for couches there um, and there's a range of uh, good looking or less good looking uh, ones um, obviously um, linking in the sketchup model into Revit um, you can do that you can uh, change its uh, materials and uh, use it in your model all right. Um, the difference between 3D warehouse and, I guess, BIM object. BIM object is uh, supplier based, so uh, you've you've got a specific supplier and a spec from them. Where 3D warehouse, it's a user driven system where people have just uploaded their their, their content and uh, you know uh, for free, and you can download. Um, then th there's others as well. Uh, I've seen BIM box. Um, there is a horde of of uh, um, other websites which you can either get free stuff or pay for them um, but uh, there's a whole of components and uh, objects obviously the uh, you can also create your own um, on the left hand side there's a little uh, uh, a little desk that's uh, that's been created um, to uh, it's obviously a unique sort of uh, you know cut desk um, and um, I've seen lots of uh, um, Organic shapes also being created these days with um, the advent of um, you know different systems within Revit, uh, be it um, adaptive components uh, where you can stretch and pull things uh, and that sort of thing. All right, but um, you can create your own content is uh, to reuse perhaps at a later stage is the the idea. All right. Um, also then looking at lights and lighting and sun studies, this is now um, also to, to kind of plan ahead um, looking at um, you know the, the real world context, um, is it north facing, south facing, the interiors, are there lights, is there um, needed, is there uh, enough uh, adequate uh, uh, natural lighting um, and uh, you can set your, your model in that particular place date and time and then go look at the uh, uh, the lux levels within that model uh, if you look on the right hand side it's uh, uh, that little uh, um, color uh, image in the floor plan uh, it depicts the the lux level uh, from from high to low uh, based on a specific uh, um, you know position and, and that sort of thing right the the, the image in the middle um, is just uh, the representation of the sun and uh, how it'll look now obviously you can keep that representation but just look on the inside of a building and uh, then you'll see the shadows in the sun and uh, and how it uh, affects um, you know the interior space uh, that you are busy with um, obviously you can also add light fittings uh, these days the light fittings um, you generate uh, or you have an IES file now that what that is it's basically a an emittance uh, web 
that you define on your light fitting and your light source and that casts a certain um, or creates a certain uh, light uh, um, a web that it casts um, that particular fitting and each fitting has different ones uh, be it uh, um, uh, whatever manufacturer and uh, that will then be incorporated as a real life uh, light fitting in your Revit model and uh, obviously the effects thereof. Right, um, so looking at lighting and, and that Revit can cater for all the eventualities in there. Um, there's, there's, you know, different colors shading that you can add. So you have a, a light fitting, but the, the, the fitting has got a slightly red or green or blue shade. Then you can just add that into your um, uh, light fitting. Right, so that's catered for. Um, then just looking at the uh, 2D and possibly 3D layouts and, and that sort of thing. So um, as mentioned before, when you create your context and your models and, and you add these objects, um, they already own 3D. But sometimes you just want to uh, present it in a 2D fashion. Um, the image on the left there allows you just to look from the top basically and uh, um, show the the you know the lounge area at the bottom of that um, L-shaped building uh, in, uh, in in plan view, showing the layout of the furniture, perhaps, um, and and that sort of thing. Now, uh, you know that's uh, obviously moving uh, components and adjusting them. Uh, it auto updates the whole thing, uh, even the 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 3D views. You know, so um, and that's the beauty of Revit, uh, where you move one component in plan and it updates all the views and uh, the schedules and the builder materials and the, the whole thing. Okay, that's that's basically a given, but um, just the middle image there, um, that's the, the perspective representation of uh, that lounge area. Um, and it's basically a camera that you add and very quickly you get a, a perspective representation of that. Um, yes, you can switch it from black and white to color and uh, uh, very quickly you, you'll get a, some sort of a result. Uh, a lot of people, uh, and you, you can from that get a good feel uh, for the space and um, you can add shadows uh, and that sort of thing to, to get even more, uh, um, you know, the idea of, you know, how it's going to feel in the morning and the afternoon and that sort of thing. Um, but, and that's very quick, uh, it's basically a push of a button, you don't have to wait for something to render um, and, and, uh, and, and typically that's used in in, in, in progress reports, uh, you've done some work, uh, you want to get uh, get it uh, signed off, um, you click a button, you send that uh, uh, perspective to someone and uh, you get feedback, yes or no, and that sort of thing. Um, just another, uh, 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 without waiting to for the final rendering to, to be done, uh, but that comes later, we'll talk about that. Just the image on the right, um, it's kind of a, a sectional perspective of that same space on the left of the image, uh, the rightmost image on the left. You'll see the um, the, the fireplace there as well, uh, protruding uh, uh, to the left hand side. But there's the it's just a different view of the same uh, area um, in context with the whole building. So you know it's different ways to present this uh, interior space um, and uh, and uh, you know the 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 circulation, how how, it's, uh, how how that space is entered and exited, and 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 uh, looking at circulation and uh, and that sort of thing. All right, but uh, okay, it's just a different presentation. That's called a, a sectional perspective. All right, um, uh, and just to come back to that, it's it's fairly easy to to do. Uh, you've got your your model. Um, you you kind of draw a section, uh, cutting through the model and uh, um, you base your 3D view uh, as per that section and uh, it generates that section view or perspective. All right, um, just moving on, um, we've, we've covered some of the, the, the creation of the model and the material, uh, the lighting. Um, also materials are catered for uh, in Revit. Uh, you can see the image on the left, if I zoom into that uh, carpet area, you can see the textures and the, and then the wood grain on the, on the chairs and that sort of thing. So, um, it allows you to to really add these sort of textures to your model these days, and uh, it's very easy to do as well. It's basically like any other application. You create a, a a texture or material, as they call it in Revit, and you apply that to the to the to the model. Um, yes, there's some uh, training needed, but 
you know, as any other system, it's uh, it's caters for uh, for for materials and uh, and the custom images even. So you can actually take a picture of uh, any kind of uh, uh, material and then bring it in to, as a custom image into into Revit and use that for for your uh, presentation. Right, um, I've just uh, uh, also talked about, uh, or want to talk about decals. Um, if you look at the image on the right hand side of that image, uh, there is a uh, picture of a, a set of penguins, a couple of penguins. Um, basically that's a decal. Now a decal is is an is a image or a photograph that you can place on a surface and uh, it forms part of your um, design. Now it could be like a, a that I've added there, just a a uh, simple uh, uh, in, in kind of uh, brackets uh, a picture on the wall but it could also be uh, bricks on a wall or it could be uh, a, a floor finish on the floor or it could be something on the ceiling that shows something or it can be um, so something bigger or smaller depending on uh, what you want or it can just be a simple uh, picture frame against the wall um, so uh, it can be used differently uh, as well as in various shapes I've just got a square there, but it can be any shape. Um, uh, it can be circular. It can be uh, uh, that sort of thing. All right. So, and it's just a simple JPEG that's uh, been added. Okay. So that can be done. All right. Uh, then, just looking at the presentation purely, um, you've got two images there. But before I describe them, uh, Revit has. Uh, has Initially, I mentioned it can be very technical and it can be very visual. Now, um, for interior design, visual is, is very uh, important. Um, and uh, what's nice about Revit these days is you, you, you've got different ways to present, uh, be it uh, black and white or a realistic view. Now, if you set it from black and white to realistic view, it's a couple of seconds and you have then that realistic view. Um, the image on the right is the realistic view. Um, so it's a couple of seconds you get that and uh, as mentioned earlier you can use that to uh, for progress uh, showing the customer you know that's what you kind of design you can sign it off and that sort of thing um, however if you do want to create a rendering um, you would press a button you wait half an hour to an hour uh, longer shorter that sort of thing and you get the image on the left now the difference between the two is not as much um, but the shadows are uh, better and more realistic on the as a, on the left um, because of the time it takes to render and the lighting that is taken in consideration and that sort of thing. All right. Um, obviously, if you want to take this whole rendering uh, up a notch, you can uh, uh, invest in other software like Lumion or V-Ray or Enscape, um, and it allows you to just increase the power of the visual. Um, I think of Lumion where you can add effects like rain, uh, extra content, uh, movement in uh, you know the form of trees moving. Um, you can actually uh, walk through your model very quickly. Uh, obviously it'll take time to render, say an hour or two, but you can very quickly walk through the model. Same with Enscape. Enscape is uh, very good with VR, um, but I guess that's a, a different discussion. Uh, obviously we're focusing on Revit and its uh, capabilities with regards to visualization. Um, and the focus here is the, the difference between these two views are not as much. The one on the right is a couple of seconds to, to generate, and the one on the left, obviously, uh, half an hour or so, so depending on your um, computer's strength, that sort of thing, and how many light fittings, and the, the, you know, the materials, uh, and that sort of thing. So from a half an hour to an hour, maybe longer or shorter. All right, so the Revit system caters for all of this uh, uh, very well. All right, um, now looking at the, once you've now generated this uh, content and the, the model and uh, you've, you've done your, uh, or, or you're busy with your uh, um, design, um, obviously, uh, um, you can look at areas because that's uh, important uh, with regards to spaces and some calculations and, and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, Revit's again geared for this sort of thing um, where you can 
very quickly generate a report. It's basically a couple of buttons that you press and it just looks at all the internal spaces, put it in a table and you can get uh, you know the square meters of a certain uh, room. Now we'll we'll look at um, specific material areas at a later, later stage or bill of materials at a later stage but just the, the general idea you can very quickly get um, as you can see on the, the little room schedule on the right um, that's just uh, you know all the rooms just tabulated and uh, just one thing on these tables or uh, schedules as they call it in Revit it's real uh, it's live so as you change the the external walls of a of a building, these areas update and you don't have to click a button to update it, they just kind of uh, update in the background. So it's kind of a, they call it live and uh, parametric. Right, and um, you can also use color fills. Um, uh, the image on the left uh, shows the different rooms and uh, colors linked to them. Now, it's not only uh, those color fills aren't only restricted to the name of the room, but it could also be something like occupancy, uh, floor finishes, um, wall finishes, ceiling finishes. So you can have maybe a section and or a 3D, well, you know, that was only 2D views, but uh, have a section or so and, and add the room legend in there and show wall finishes or um, a ceiling plan and show a ceiling, you know, different ceiling uh, uh, colors. Right, now the idea with this is not to show the exact color but to show the differences in the finishes um, and the, in this case the room legend the difference in the rooms you know each color has got distinct different and uh, you can see all right the the circulation or the wall is is dark blue and, and, and that sort of thing you know very quickly visually you can see uh, what's happening, uh, where the uh, different occupancies, uh, you know, are planned for. All right, um, so that's just a little bit of area calculations. Um, looking at now materials and bill of materials, uh, where you count things, um, that's easily done. So once the the modeling is completed, and perhaps, you know, with this in mind, because uh, you can you can model very various ways. Uh, and an important thing with Revit is when you model up front, um, be aware of the deliverable that you want at the end. In this case, you know, the number of uh, items or the, the carpet area and that sort of thing. So when you model, have that in mind. So when you uh, uh, get to this point where you need to generate the, the area of the carpet, you can just click a button and, and there we go. Um, in this case, there's a schedule as well on the right uh, showing the, the carpeted area. Uh, so th that's a multi-category schedule, meaning it it places and and records all the areas in your model. Um, and in this case, it's just been filtered to point to only carpet. You can change the filter to point to to a certain paint color and get the square meterage of that paint color, or change the uh, um, or even volume, you know, uh, with regards to bricks or concrete or, or that sort of thing. Uh, you know, this is just an area of calculation with regards to carpet. Um, on the left-hand side, it's just a simple furniture schedule. So listing, you know, the chairs and uh, uh, and uh, in which level they are, that sort of thing. Obviously, again, this is live. So if I delete a chair, delete a chair in the plan, um, then will be one less in this little list. You don't have to physically count them. All right, and then it becomes um, a time saver as you go on. And uh, you obviously can, uh, column D there, if you can see on the image on the left, there's a little cost column. Um, and that'll allow you to multiply the number of items times the cost and get a total. Um, and that can be done for, for areas, for physical, individual counted items, it can be volume, my, uh, you know, counting per per cube uh, of concrete, you know, that sort of thing. So it's all live. So as you delete the chair, you know, the cost update, um, you don't have to do any, uh, uh, you know, Excel uh, calculations afterwards. All right. So that's that's where the where the deliverables uh, um, are planned for and become the time savers as you go uh, along. You know, it's all linked together.
All right. Um, you can also schedule linear things like uh, cornices and uh, um, the length of those railings or cornices or anything that's linear. You can also schedule uh, getting the uh, the length, and then you can then time that by maybe a, a cost per per meter and get a total uh, and that sort of thing. All right. So this is where we uh, um, once you've done the modeling, the uh, uh, deliverables is easy to to get to say costing and that sort of thing um, to quote or to uh, to provide uh, you know different services okay all right then um, just taking a little bit a, s a step further um, additional things that you can do uh, with Revit um, we have a tool called design options now design options is think of it as um, different designs that you think of and um, you draw them up um, and uh, the image on the left uh, bottom there you'll see there's the main model uh, option set one and two or options within option set one and two right so in that scenario there's two options uh, and you can set then or draw both and you can present both of them uh, on sheets and get to the client discuss both of them uh, maybe the client uh, uh, and you can also cost both of them as well um, and uh, the client decides on one and you just switch your model to that option becoming the primary and then uh, you know execute that or um, formalize that uh, option to be part of the model so it's kind of think of it as your design as you design it branches out into two or three or four options and then once you've decided it uh, moves back into one uh, design workflow once you've made the decision um, right so there is options like that and it could be furniture layout it could be lighting uh, uh, options it could be uh, material options it could be um, you know various changes that you think you know uh, uh, could apply and then obviously the client will decide together with maybe a team of other uh, consultants and that sort of thing. All right. Um, in the middle and, and on the right, um, this is now where it comes a little bit uh, more complex uh, with regards to Revit, but that's the beauty of Revit is that um, most people can use the majority of the product, but if you can grow and increase your productivity as you learn more about the software. And um, the idea there is Dynamo. Now Dynamo, what it basically is, it's it's a very technical, uh, not very technical, but it's a it's a programming language that allows you to do things within your model uh, and automate things within your model. In that middle little picture, um, if you blow it up or whatever, you'll see there's a little script that attaches tiles from the bottom of the wall um, to a certain length. And you can there's a slider. So as you slide the uh, um, slider, it increases the the tiles uh, higher ab above the door uh, lintel height or lower below the lintel height. Um, so without modeling anything, it's just a slider that you do. So that's just one example uh, of Dynamo. But other examples could be something like it picks up all the chairs and it changes the one chair into a, a table or uh, you're picking up all the uh, the the green um, or the materials or the green carpet and you change it to blue carpet so you can um, automate things with designing this script and the beauty for this is that script you save in a library uh, in future maybe uh, you need that script again you just run the script and you know the task was in that script is executed and uh, and that's where the the time uh, uh, allows you to, to be saved because you you design one script once and you use it many times um, in future right so that uh, uh, obviously is a little bit more tricky meaning you need to learn 
you know the language of Dynamo. It's like uh, any other uh, language that you learn. Um, it's uh, it's small steps, and you need to keep on practicing it, um, and that sort of thing. So, but um, that then takes us to generative design, which is based on Dynamo. So it's basically uh, Dynamo as a grounding or ground base, and you've got some front end uh, image uh, and and uh, parameters that you can set. Now, the image on the right-hand side there is um, a generative designed uh, uh, space. Now, the, the desks that you see there um, are designed and grouped and positioned based on uh, various factors. Now, one of the factors could be uh, direct light, sunlight. The other factor could be, say, um, uh, social distancing. The other could be uh, maximum number of desks. The other one could be, you know, um, uh, you know, different uh, angles based on north, south, east, or west. So um, you'll see the there's four various results, and you can pick which one you want, and based on the parameters that are important to you or less important. Now that's just one design script. A generative design script that's been created. Um, there are you can create your own. Um, you can also download, uh, you know, some of the the others. Um, these scripts is going to become the future of design. Um, so it's basically the computer that looks at some certain parameters and then gives you four or ten or twenty results, and you as an interior design pick the right one based on the client and various factors that uh, you want to look at. Okay, uh, the reason why I did this is just uh, to, to to go into a little bit of a more complex space um, than just, you know, creating the geometry and the walls and the doors and, um, you know, but so there is room to grow within this whole Revit system. Okay, so let's carry on. Alright, so just looking at um, now documentation and um, Initially, I said, okay, there is two sides to uh, to Revit, very visual, and also, um, you know, the technical side. And once you've created the the geometry, you can uh, present it in in various ways. Now, um, as you can see, there's a staircase detail and some elevations and sections and that sort of thing. And on the right hand side, there's a an example where you just add with a tag or they call it a uh, elevation marker within the inside of a room and it automatically generates the four elevations on the inside of that room um, and you don't have to draw anything it generates those four views on the right hand side there um, just based on that one uh, marker that you've placed All right and that's speed uh, uh, with with a sort of uh, documentation side now using Dynamo you can actually automate this, i.e., um, I'm just going to, in English, you know, interpret, you know, the, the workflow. Maybe you tell Dynamo, please look at all the rooms in my project, place a elevation marker, and generate the four views on each room on a sheet. Um, you create that um, uh, script, uh, save it somewhere, and in each project that you uh, design, you just run that script. And um, I've actually done it. I've written a little blog on on that particular topic, and um, we can rerun that script on each project that we uh, use, and it uh, just simply generates the the sheets with the four internal elevations for that particular room. And uh, yes, they might not be spaced nicely. I can space them, but running one script, you save hours in in each project. Right, so that's just uh, looking at a little bit of um, documentation and that sort of thing. Obviously, you could still uh, add your uh, colors in here, um, but I specifically made it very uh, black and white and very technical. Uh, sometimes that's needed, um, but obviously there's a spectrum within, you know, having colors and, and, and presentations and then obviously the technical side as well. All right, so... I think uh, the main advantage of uh, Revit is the ability for you to then 
uh, be able to open up and uh, the world of BIM. Now, uh, with regards to the world of BIM, uh, that's where the bigger guys are playing and uh, where you can get involved in, uh, meaning that um, there's bigger projects out there, they all use Revit, um, they all share the models via the BIM 360 cloud system and if you use something like uh, you know other software you might be seen as, as kind of working in a silo um, rather than you know uh, working together with a with 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 everyone um, but it uh, using Revit and the BIM 360 tool it opens those doors for bigger projects to be involved in um, now the the idea behind it is um, you you would get say you're working in a bigger project uh, just to give an example uh, you'll get the geometry of the building from an architect you would add your uh, on the cloud you would add your uh, space layouts and your uh, information to that um, and then share it with the other stakeholders they'll do maybe you've adding different things walls doors and windows they will check clashes and they will see uh, what's happening with that and then um, you know the the people will pass the model on to other stakeholders be it structural engineers or MEP guys um, looking at the electrical services or the uh, air conditioning services and that sort of thing and see uh, and coordinate uh, clashes and um, you know the different services that you require and the architect uh, uh, to uh, solve the building um, and the interiors right but that allows you to be involved in those larger projects and it all happens in the cloud these days no passing of uh, printed drawings and that sort of thing um, it's all visual and uh, uh, that sort of thing now looking on the left hand side uh, there's a the, the image there's a BIM 360 design and BIM 360 docs now um, when you use Revit you will use uh, BIM 360 design to share your model with the other stakeholders and um, then publish it to the docs side. Uh, the docs side will then be uh, available for uh, people to uh, you know, interrogate and um, that's maybe not Revit users to uh, uh, accept the design or uh, you know, redline it and, and then pass it back to you and you then go on and do version 2 and so you go on and up and down. Now the image on the right hand side it's just a, a project workflow and which Autodesk software is required in which phase of the project. Um, conceptual design, you'll still get away with BIM 360 um, until you know this construction documentation and then within that then there is other softwares like uh, for the construction uh, BIM 360 build and plan. And that's basically snag lists uh, once the design has been built um, you can take photos, upload it to this cloud-based system. Um, in the 3D model, you tag uh, what needs to change. That gets automatically emailed to the service provider that needs to change that. Uh, it's time-based, so he can then plan ahead. Uh, once he's finished fixing what it needs to that snag, he can uh, solve that you know snag, and it gets emailed to the creator and uh, saying that that snag is done. So the whole construction process is now cloud-based uh, with this particular system and for bigger projects that saves a lot of time because uh, you don't read emails and up and down this and that. Everything is in the cloud, one source of truth and the beauty of you as interior design using Revit is that you are included in this whole system and that opens again a lot of doors particular larger projects um, and that's uh, I guess where the, uh, the the money is right um, just in a conclusion again that's uh, basically the idea um, Revit is a tool um, you know that fits the workflows uh, of interior designers yes it might not be as easy to use uh, as, as, as other softwares but there's lots of benefits that allow you to compete and uh, be more productive lots of benefits uh, like BIM and the workflow that uh, opens doors for bigger projects um, and that sort of thing. All right, so I um, hope you had, uh, that's basically my, 
my presentation. Um, thank you for the time that you, uh, uh, you know, listened. Um, and uh, uh, if you have any further questions, please type them in. There's some time. Um, otherwise, just reach out uh, on that website. Uh, contact us. You can just, if you need to, uh, just add my name, Shoal, and uh, I'll get back to you then uh, on on this particular uh, topic. If you also have something, uh, you know, specific, you're welcome to to uh, to add it to the uh, chat box. I'm going to have a look at that now. Uh, I'm, and uh, if not, then um, thank you for the time, and uh, I'll see you then on the next next topic next month. I think um, right. So keep out on uh, on that, or we'll keep looking at the uh, our emails to you, uh, and register for the particular uh, webinar that you are interested in. Right. <clears throat> okay. There's a question. Um, Right, so just on the visualization, uh, some questions on uh, which add-on would you recommend? Um, right, so there's lots of add-ons, um, and some of them have benefits in, in certain areas. Um, obviously, there's a couple that comes to mind. Obviously, the first is Lumion. Um, it's basically not an add-on, but a uh, addition to uh, the the workflow, meaning that you can export your Revit model to Lumion and uh, um, add content, trees, effects, do walkthroughs, people, cars, that sort of thing. Um, you know, they they move and rain and snow and wind. Uh, you can add all those effects and it just becomes just one level higher in the presentation and visualization. Okay, so that's the benefit. Um, the main benefit of Lumion is the movement and the re realism. Um, one a thing like Inkscape, it's an add-on, so it's inside uh, uh, in inside Revit, and it uses the content, the Revit content. It has a small library of content that you can add people and and, and trees and, and different things, but it's reliant on your Revit materials and lighting. Um, where Lumion has is, is got its own set of lighting and materials, so you add those. Um, Inkscape, again, is, is very good on VR, so you click a button and you put in your headset and you're inside that model, um, and you can work around, you can record your, your movement in a video sort of uh, fashion, and you can replay that. Um, obviously, it's inside Revit, so you, you know if you're working with a customer, you'll have to work in Revit with the customer and it might be a little bit uh, odd with the customer you know w working in inside it's it's another um, uh, VR application and then also you've got something like V-Ray um, that allows you premier materials and lighting and visualization results um, obviously 3d studio max um, that's also a premier visualization but it's hard to work um, it's not one button that you press but 100 <laughs> um, but you obviously have 99 more options than maybe the one button uh, so yes it might be more complex but you would have different results that you can uh, um, produce in uh, in something like 3d studio max all right um, to optimize you know rendering um, these days um, I must just to be honest um, uh, Revit has come a long way with uh, regards to the rendering. Uh, in the past, they ha they were uh, reliant on a third-party rendering system, which they obviously kicked out, and, and now they've got their own uh, propriety system. So basically, uh, they can develop that, and uh, it's it's come a long way. Um, three, four versions back, they started that, and uh, um, it's come a long way. It's very fast. Um, still with the um, the uh, walkthroughs and that it's uh, uh, there are other software that's faster, but are they starting to uh, take um, the starting to use the graphics card GPU instead of the PC CPU anyway? So that uh, but it um, yeah at least they can develop that sort of speed that's needed on the inside or with Revit. Okay.
hope that answers your question. All right. Um, any other questions? Uh, welcome to type out. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to conclude that. Uh, we'll conclude the and stop the recording. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for the time. Um, and see you on the next on the next webinar.